Hi everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry where today we're going to be going over how the enthalpy change of a reaction can be calculated using bonds broken minus bonds formed. Some people prefer for this one reactants minus products but it's entirely up to you. Either way what we're going to be using are average bond enthalpies and an average bond enthalpy is the amount of energy required to break one mole of a bond in the gaseous state. Let's have a look at a particular example of a bond. Let's take the CH bond for instance. Now the CH bond is a really common bond in chemistry and can be found in lots of different molecules. For example, it is in both of these two structures. So the one at the bottom has got CH bonds and the one at the top has also got CH bonds. Now the one at the bottom is an example of ibuprofen, a well-known painkiller, and we've got to the top right ethanoic anhydride, a less known structure but can be used to form an ester in your upper six carbonyl topic should you want to look ahead into the upper six part of the course. Now what we've got then since they've both got CH bonds but very different environments I mean look at the rest of the structures they are completely different from each other. This has a knock-on effect on the CH bond strength and changes it ever so slightly from molecule to molecule. So as a result a mean average is calculated and an average bond enthalpy used for calculations like the one above. Take this table for instance then, that is taken from an OCRA exam, and what we can see in this table is we've got average bond enthalpies, and look, we've got our CH bond that we were looking at in a moment ago. The units back up what I was saying before about it being the amount of energy required to break one mole of a bond in the gaseous state, and also the fact that these are all, don't know if you noticed, but if you have a look, they're all positive numbers. So that means these are all endothermic energy requirements which means that it requires energy to break a bond so when we are breaking bonds we're putting energy in it requires energy but when we are forming a bond energy must be being given out and so I've given students in the lesson the idea of a clap for this so if you've got your hands locked together you've got to put in energy to separate your hands because they're locked together if you lock your fingers together you've got the two attraction between your hands and that's what a bond is an attraction um, especially if you do an OCRA, you'll know, well you'll well know, that the covalent bond definition is the strong electrostatic attraction between a shared pair of electrons and the nuclei of the two bonded atoms. And then when you form a bond, you are creating that attraction. And so lots of energy is being given out because then you're making a bond which is, of course, more stable than individual atoms. So how can we utilize this in the exam? Well, this is the actual equation as well that came up for this average bond enthalpy data table. And we can see here we've got CO2 reacting with hydrogen to make methane and some water. Now, what they wanted you to do, just as I described at the start of this video, was calculate the enthalpy change using all of this data that we've got just here. So what you need to do is add up all the enthalpy that was required to break all the bonds in the reactants. I think one of the common mistakes people make for this is they forget for CO2, for instance, Remember that CO2 has got a structure like this. So it's actually got two lots of the bond in the data table here for the C double bond O. So just be vigilant for that. And then what you needed to do, as soon as you've done that, so you calculate the numbers separately, you then subtract from that all the energy that is released when the bonds are formed. Now, if the answer comes out as endothermic overall, then that means more energy was required to break the bonds than was released in forming the new ones. However, if the overall enthalpy change comes out as exothermic, then that means more energy was released when forming the new bonds than was required to break the bonds in the reactants. So do be vigilant, do be careful about the use of the terms required, released, endo, exothermic, reactants and products. You might want to drag that bit across and listen to that again if you felt the wording for that was a little bit confusing, but that is really the simplest I can make it for you. So, for calculating this value, if you actually have a go with the numbers, if you want to, you can pause the video now, but otherwise, here's the answer from the Mart Scheme. So here you go, that's a snippet from the Mart Scheme. And what we can see here, first off, and I know I go on about this enough with these videos, but Notice, in OCRA mark schemes, the instruction to the marker is first check the answer on the line. If the answer is minus 162 kilojoules per mole, immediately award a three mark. So please make sure you put in your answer as clearly as possible. Now, you'll also notice here that the final answer is minus 162. Now, the only way you're ever going to get exactly the right sign on your answer is if you always remember to do bonds broken minus bonds formed. If you learn to do big number minus little number, sometimes you'll get the right answer. 
Sometimes you won't in terms of the sign. But if you always do bonds broken minus bonds formed, or if you don't like bonds broken and bonds formed, you could always just learn to do reactants minus products. That's perfectly acceptable as well. But it's entirely up to you. You'll notice here that you can see in the mark scheme, they actually do use bond breaking, bond making. It doesn't really matter too much. It's all the same kinds of term. And so as long as you get into that right answer, and as long as you're realizing that we're using average bond enthalpies here, and you know what those are, how we calculate it, then you are really getting the, to grips with the topic. Now, just to finish us up, one of the critiques of this is that the answer that we get, so this minus 162, may not actually be the same as the data book value that we would find for this particular reaction. And the reason for that is these average bond enthalpies, they're not specific to those molecules in the equation. And so nothing to do with heat loss or anything else, that's a practical consideration. The reason that this answer of minus 162 may be different from a data book answer for this particular reaction's enthalpy change is because these values are not specific to the molecules in these equations. I hope that clears up some of the bonds broken and bonds formed work for you and how we can end up with exo-endothermic answers, where the numbers come from and how we use them. I'll leave you to the rest of the playlist and until then, happy revising.